Okay, hello and welcome to another video. Uh, today we're joined by Jeffrey Schwartz again, our Executive Director, and today we're going to be talking about the importance of establishing good credit and why that's important in Canada. So Jeff, thanks again for joining us. Uh, ben, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm really excited for today as we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, credit. I like it because it is rich with opportunity. Today we're going to be talking about uh, credit, more specifically what is credit and why does it matter. Uh, so whether you are a newcomer to Canada or you've just turned 18 and you want to start building some good credit, uh, today's video will hopefully answer most of your questions and provide some tips uh, to keep you from getting into trouble. And helping those that have gotten into trouble with some bad debt is something Jeff has quite a bit of experience with. So let's start with one of the most common questions I get, and that is, how can I build my credit without getting into trouble? Mm. Now, I'm sure we're going to delve into this in greater detail throughout this video and, and the next one. However, it, it, it really just boils down to learning, planning, and discipline. Understand what a credit score and credit profile is made up of, make a plan to build or rebuild it, and stick to the plan relentlessly. Right. Uh, that's a big part of it, the discipline. Uh, and you know, Some people are better than, with that than others, but that's a great way to look at it. So obviously, rather than just answering you know, what is credit, we're also going to take a look at why credit, specifically good credit, uh, matters so much here in Canada. A large part of that's going to include your credit reports. Now, there's a ton of confusion around credit reports and how to read them and understand them, so we'll spend a bit of time looking at what I call credit report translation. Uh, we'll also need to look at credit scores and more specifically how they are calculated. And finally, we'll briefly look at credit ratings uh, because those are important to understand uh, as often potential lenders are going to be looking at those specific ratings uh, when deciding whether or not to lend to you. So all of these help should help us round out a major concern for many of Canada and that is how to build or establish good credit. Ben, I, I'm exhausted just, just by hearing what you're talking about. I mean, that sounds like quite a bit of information we're going to be going to cover. So I'm going to try my best to keep it short and to the point. And the first point would be to know where you are on the credit score spectrum. We're, we see that there in the chart, the credit scores in Canada range between somewhere 300 to 900, with anything over 760 being considered excellent, and anything below 560 as being poor. Right, there's a ton to cover here, so we're just going to look at the basics. Uh, but if you want to learn, you know, there's a ton of great information, tools, and resources that can be found on our website. Uh, so if you want to learn more about what we talk about today in detail, that would be a great place to start. Uh, so back to our main question, what is credit? So what is credit? Well, the word credit could mean several things and is often used interchangeably with other things like lending risk or credit scores, but largely it refers to your ability to obtain and repay loans and financial agreements. Credit history, credit scores, and the lender's own criteria are the biggest parts of a consumer's credit assessment. Based on the information in your credit reports, you'll be assigned a three-digit score. And as we just saw, the higher the score, the better. With high credit scores and clean credit reports, you're more likely to be approved for loans and you'll get the lowest interest rates and the most favorable terms. And it will also show your lender your credit character. Now, the lender of a financial institution may have some of their own lending criteria, such as collateral or assets that you own, but you can be sure that they will be looking at your credit information as well. Yes, and most of that credit information will be provided by one or both of Canada's credit bureaus, and they would be Equifax or TransUnion. You might have heard them or seen their commercials. So you'll want to check both credit reports at least once per year. Uh, it's free if it's done through the mail. No, don't worry. Checking your own credit report won't lower your credit score. So you can head over to the bureau's websites, download the credit report request forms. Uh, once you fill out those forms, you'll have to include two photocopies of photo ID, and then you'll mail them to the address on the forms. In 15 to 30 days, you'll receive the most recent and up-to-date uh, credit information on those credit reports. So, you know, who cares about credit? Why do I need to worry about it? Why do I have to start building my credit when I'm young? Those are the questions that I hear all the time uh, from either people in my workshops or people that are just financially frustrated. They're fed up with credit. Uh, it might not seem fair that one or two blemishes on your credit report uh, can affect your ability to get a low interest mortgage or a loan, uh, but a bad credit history can be much more serious than that. So 
chances are you're probably going to need a place to live. And your credit score is certainly going to be something that your landlord, leaseholder, or property management company will be interested in. And certainly if you're looking at buying a home, having the highest credit score possible will give you the best chance of landing the lowest interest rates, which will save you tens of thousands of dollars throughout the life of your mortgage. Now, you're probably going to get jobs and keep them. In some industries, having bad credit, filing for bankruptcy, or having certain judgments issued against you can be just enough to keep you from getting a job, or worse, losing the job that you have. Bad credit might also cost you more than you expected when trying to set up necessary utilities like hydro, water, natural gas at your home. The utility companies will look at your credit score as a way to assess whether or not to charge you a security deposit before hooking up your services. The same goes for insurance coverage. High credit scores, clean credit reports show to your insurance company that you're great at paying your bills on time, in full. And as a result, they may charge you a lower premium for your clean record. So credit does matter for so much more than just getting a good interest rate on a loan. Right. So lots of good reasons uh, other than just getting loans and credit to you know, establish some credit uh, young. So now on to the credit reports. Uh, Jeff will let us know a little bit more about what these are and where you can get them. So with respect to credit reports, often this is where lenders will start when determining your lending risk. So it makes sense for us to start there too. Now we won't go into too much detail here today. We're just going to look at the basics. So if you wanted to learn more about how to read your credit report, be sure to watch our next video, which will give you a much more in-depth look at credit reports. So what is a credit report? Essentially your credit report is your credit history. It's a seven year history of your credit and loan accounts. Although there can be information reported on there for longer than seven years, and that's just, <clears throat> excuse me, and that's okay as long as it's good information. Typically, each account on your credit report will fall under one of the following categories, R, I, O, or M. Revolving accounts for R are things like credit cards, I would be installment loans, and, and they'd be things for like car loans or student loans. Open sources of credit are, are things like utility bills or cell phone contracts. And M is for, of course, mortgages. In addition to your credit history and types of credit accounts, your credit report will also make note of both negative and positive information, such as paying on time or by how late you've paid. Even things like if the debt was sold to collections or if you filed a bankruptcy. So it's your job to ensure that all the information is correct. If you find an error on your credit report, you need to dispute it and get it fixed as soon as possible. Right. And we see it all the time where someone has some incorrect information or an error reporting on their credit report, and that could reflect your uh, credit score. So be sure you check those out. If there is any mistakes, yeah, like Jeff said, you need to get those fixed. So the first question is, you know, how do I get those credit reports? Uh, well, there are many ways to get your credit report, but the cheapest and easiest is through the mail. All it costs is the price of postage. You just need to buy a stamp. Uh, your, you can request your credit reports from both credit bureaus once per year. All you need to do is go to the bureau websites and download the consumer disclosure request forms. So you'll mail in those to the addresses with the photocopies of your ID that I mentioned earlier. And like I said, 15 to 30 days later, you'll have your credit reports. Uh, but that's only half the battle. Uh, what's next, Jeff? Oh, uh, that's a good question, Ben. Getting the reports is the easy part. Understanding what's on them is what matters. But start with the basics. Make sure everything is correct and that you recognize every account that on, that's on that report. If you see something you don't recognize, it could be a sign of identity theft. So check your reports carefully and be sure to check them annually. Now, you can also get your uh, credit reports online from the bureaus themselves instantly, but they're going to charge a fee for that. Another good option is to ask your bank or financial institution, as they'll often give you a credit report free. Uh, it'll be likely from one of the two bureaus, but not likely both. And your other option is to look to someone like a free online service that offers credit reports and scores. But just be mindful that these websites are often loan comparison or brokerage sites, which will also recommend loans and credit cards that reflect on your credit score. So just be aware. Right. So that would be like uh, the ones you see the commercials for, like Credit Karma or Borrow Well. So, yeah, they're not just doing it sort of out of the goodness of their heart. Uh, but if you're in the market for getting a new credit card, that might be a good place to look. 
Um, so here we see an Equifax credit report. Here's an example of the one that you can get from uh, the Equifax website. And you can see there it's not exactly the easiest document to read, uh, especially if you're new to the whole credit system. Uh, now what we're going to do is go, we're not going to go into too much detail regarding these actual reports today. We're going to save that for our next video, uh, and that is what is a credit report. But today we're just going to look at the basics. Uh, firstly, you'll have your personal information, names, birthdays, addresses, so ensure that this information is all correct. Uh, next, you'll see your employment information. Um, so there may not be employment information there. If you've ever applied for credit or supplied your employment information to a lender, say for example you're filling out a loan, uh, then there's a good chance that that will show up on your credit report. But again, you want to make sure that the information is correct. Uh, next, we've got things like special services and consumer statements, uh, which we'll go into detail on a little bit more in the next video. Um, but special services are uh, things like uh, credit monitoring or fraud alerts. That's where you place those. Uh, so a consumer statement is more like a personal statement. You know, you can add um, a sentence or two just to try and explain, you know, why there was a mistake or, you know, what couldn't be fixed uh, through a dispute. Uh, so we'll go into detail more about fraud and consumer statements. Uh, in our next video um, and when they should be used, when they shouldn't use. But for now, it's good to know that they are available if you need them. And finally, we're going to get to the credit information. Um, so this is a list of each credit or loan account that you've had and some basic information about it. Uh, things like what type of credit it is, if it's revolving, uh, installment, how long the account has been open, uh, what the balances are, uh, if you've paid late or on time. Oops, I'm getting ahead of myself there. Uh, so if you've played late or paid on time, that's all going to be recorded there. Uh, so that's a credit report, and essentially it's your credit history. So based on that history and any of that credit information that's in there, both the good stuff and the bad stuff, uh, you're going to be given a credit score based on that. And as Jeff mentioned earlier, credit scores typically range between 300 and 900, and the higher they are, the better. Uh, but if you're new to the country or you're a young person with no credit, uh, credit history, your credit score might be a big old zero. Uh, so how do they calculate those scores? Well, that's what the next slide's for, and Jeff's going to kind of walk us through the basics of credit score calculation. Yeah, thanks, Ben. And, uh, and I hate to say it, but it's a tricky question, so we'll have to speak in broad strokes here, very broad strokes, actually. I mean, as Ben mentioned, credit scores fall between 300 and 900. But how each credit bureau arrives at your credit score is different. In fact, the credit score you see might not be the credit score your lender or bank will see. That is why it's important to check both credit reports from both credit bureaus and ensure the information is the same or as close to the same as possible. Some lenders use Equifax, other lenders use TransUnion, TransUnion and they might even place a higher weight on some credit information than others. Plus, each lender and financial institution will also have its own lending criteria outside of your credit reports and scores to consider. But that's a discussion for a different video. Anyways, getting back to those very broad strokes. We can generally calculate your credit scores like this chart here. You can see that the biggest factor in your credit score is payment history. Do you always pay on time and in full? Then chances are, if, you, if the answer to that is yes, then chances are you've got a good credit score as 35% of your score depends on whether you pay on time or late. Now, next we see that 30% of your score depends on the amounts owed, or rather, how much debt you are in. A general rule of thumb is to never carry a balance higher than 30% of your limit. So this is also called utilization. For example, let's say I have a $1,000 limit on a credit card, and for some reason, I don't think I'll be able to pay it off in full this month. Maybe my car broke down. If I were to carry a balance on that card of $300, 30% of its limit for just two or three months, my credit score would start to go down because I'm overutilized. So when people start maxing out credit cards and their lines of credit month after month, their credit scores start to suffer. Next on the chart is the length of credit a length of credit use. So newcomers and young people starting to establish credit are a bit of a disadvantage because the longer you use credit responsibly, the higher your credit score will climb. Moving on, we have new credit or rather credit applications or inquiries. 
When you apply for loans and credit, you're agreeing to a hard credit check, sometimes called a hard credit pull. This means a lender is checking your credit as part of the application process, and it can also signal a bit of a credit risk. As a result, too many hard credit checks or inquiries can start to lower your credit score. So only apply for credit when you need it. Just ask yourself, why? Why do I need this loan or credit card? If the answer is to buy a car, a home, or for emergencies, collecting rewards points, or building credit, then that's a good reason to apply. However, if the answer is to pay off another loan or to make ends meet, then looking for credit will only delay inevitable financial problems. Finally, we've got the last 10%, which is types of new credit or your credit mix. Having different types of credit shows that you can handle different financial obligations. For instance, if you're paying down student, a student loan and using a credit card responsibly every month, then you'll have excellent credit scores in a year or two. Right, so some good information there to consider when you're trying to build your credit. Uh, but this calculation model is a little old. I'd say at least 50 years or so. So yeah, there's been a little bit of advancement since then, but broadly this chart still helps to highlight the most important parts of a credit score. If we wanted to look at it in terms of a credit score, let's take 600 as our example, uh, as that's usually what's considered fair credit by most lenders. Uh, a 600 means you'll most likely be considered for most loans and credit cards, but there's going to be a little bit more restrictive term. Uh, it could be lower credit limits uh, and definitely higher interest rates. So at 600, your credit score could essentially be broken down like this. 210 points would be awarded to your effort to pay on time. 180 points would be credited for how much debt you currently owe or your utilization that we mentioned. Uh, 90 points would be awarded to how long you've used credit. And 60 points each would be counted towards how many credit applications you've applied for and what your current credit mix is. Uh, by maintaining good credit habits such as paying your bills on time and in full every month, and by not applying for credit that you don't really need, your score is only going to go up from there. However, if you started to make mistakes, like you're maxing out credit cards and not paying them off, uh, if you're paying late or you're having your debts turned over to collection agencies, then you'll expect your credit score to start to slide below the 600, which puts it into poor credit territory. So how do we establish that good credit? Well, that's the big question. How do I build good credit? Well, the first thing your lenders will want to see is that you're earning an income. This shows that you have the capacity to repay your loans and financial obligations. Uh, once you've obtained a source of credit, maybe a secured credit card or a small loan or something like that, preferably one that reports to both credit bureaus. Some only report to Equifax, some might only report to TransUnion, but if you can find one that reports to both, it's best. So it's time to start using it and paying the balance in full every month. That's going to show uh, a steady history of using credit responsibly. It's even better if you can get two sources of credit reporting to both credit bureaus. And if you're worried that you can't get approved for credit because you're too new or because you made some mistakes in the past, uh, don't. Right? There are programs out there to help you with that. Now, that's right, Ben. I mean, anyone, no matter what their credit score, can also get what's called a secured credit card. All that means is that you'll have to provide a deposit to secure the limit. So if you put down a $1,000 deposit at a bank for a secured credit card, they'll give you a real credit card with a $1,000 limit. Real credit but also real interest rates too. So make sure you use it and pay it off in full. And if the $1,000 deposit is a bit of a barrier, you might want to look to get alternative credit card companies or credit union uh, cards where you might be able to find one for around $500 to get you started. Monitor your credit and in a, full, in a few months, you'll be able to apply for an unsecured credit card and get your deposit back. You can also look at credit building loans or programs. These are often GIC or savings loans program where you'll pay into, what, what you'll do is you'll pay into that each and every month. Each month that you make a payment on time, it will be reported to the credit bureaus. At the end of the program, the loan will be paid out minus the fees from the credit program company, of course. So if you're seriously considering a credit rebuilding program or credit building program, be sure you understand their fee structure and also make sure that these programs will be reported to both credit bureaus to net the best score for you. Right, so there's some options out there for people with no credit or maybe bruised credit to try and just you know, bring themselves back into that good credit territory. So really, the mantra here is to borrow, pay, and then repeat. 
And it's something I often recommend to my clients and workshop attendees. You know, use a credit card for some monthly needs. Leave the credit card at home if you have to. That way you're not tempted to take your friends out for drinks or pay for the family dinner. Uh, but set it up to be automatically charged to your credit card. Then be sure to pay off your balance before the end of the month. So, you know, what is an easily affordable monthly expense for you? Whether it's a monthly expense like your hydro bill or your cell phone bill, something could be more affordable like maybe your internet bill or even just a Netflix subscription. Try and use your credit card, pay it off, and then do it again the next month. By doing it with a monthly expense, one, you're paying for something that you essentially need every month, and two, you'll be establishing a great credit history. Eventually, you might even get to the point where you're approved for a cash back or rewards point credit card. Then you're not only paying your monthly bills and building your credit, but now you're getting something in return, like maybe uh, free gas or groceries or my personal favorite, cash. So uh, that brings us to the end of our video on the importance of establishing good credit in Canada. Next, we'll be taking a much closer look at uh, things like disputing errors, uh, what the different credit reports mean, and a whole lot more. Uh, so that video will be coming out shortly, and it's called, What is a Credit Report? But for now, if you had any specific questions you'd like to direct to either Jeff or myself, uh, you can reach us at the email address you see there. And for a whole host of educational resources and tools, uh, you'll find them at that website there as well. Uh, so that's all for today. Thanks again for watching us, and I'd like to thank Jeff again for being with us uh, and lending his expertise to this uh, video. Ben, it's always a pleasure to be here, and, and I know while there was a lot of information today, it, it really was the very broad strokes. I think uh, as we dive into our next video, uh, I think we'll we'll get into a little bit more detail, and it might make all sense. It might all make sense at the end of it all. But thank you very much. Right. So stay tuned for our next one if you want to get into the kind of 200 level of credit reports. So thanks for watching and have a great day.